Hey guys, Bella here. I just wanted to tell my weird Lyft story as a Lyft driver. So this is the um, strangest thing that's ever happened to me. Um, actually a very bad experience. So last night I was uh, doing some rides from a concert in uh, Tupelo, Mississippi. And um, I got four people that I picked up from the concert. Three in the back and one in the front. And uh, two girls in the back and one guy in the back. And then another guy in the front. So, um... You know, everything's going smooth, they're drunk, but, you know, I pick up drunk people all the time, it's not a big deal. Um, we get on the interstate to head to where they are going, it's about a 12 minute ride, um, and the passenger uh, in the back asked me to go to Taco Bell. And I told him, you know, if you want to go to Taco Bell, I can drop you off, I just can't wait, because, you know, um, we don't get paid to wait, and I don't wait for fast food, I'm not a... Um, you know, I'm not Grubhub, I'm not someone who's supposed to be delivering food. Um, so anyways, he says that I am a bitch for not taking him to Taco Bell, um, and that he's paying for the ride, and he's supposed to take, I'm supposed to take him wherever he wants to go, and at this point his friends are all like, dude, calm down, you're being ridiculous, and he's like, I'm gonna report this driver, and just being very, very aggressive, and so I was calmly just like, if you would like to get out of the car now, you can. Um, because you can't talk to me like this in my car anymore. Um, and I looked over to his other friend who was in the passenger seat next to me and I was like, is he gonna continue to be a problem? Because if so, I need to go ahead and let him out now and I can take the rest of you home. Um, so his friend was kind of assuring me that it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay, um, whatever. So at that point, I should have just pulled over somewhere and let them all get out of my car and I would have been better off. But anyways, I felt bad for the other people because they had to get home and their friend was acting like a jackass. So um, I went ahead and took them to his house. Um, and of course, he stopped grumbling and stuff after his friend told him to shut up. But he'd already called me a bitch in my own car. So I knew I was going to report them regardless. Um, so we got to his house and he gets out of the car and basically just jumps out and um, goes, opens his garage door and like shuts it so everyone else in the car couldn't get in. And so I guess what was his girlfriend um, got out of the car to go into the house. And then the other two passengers, a girl in the back seat and a guy in the front seat, told me they needed to go somewhere else. And I was like, okay, well we can do that. We can change the uh, pickup or the destination. So I changed their destination and that wound up being about another 10 minutes away to another neighborhood. So. Um, the whole entire ride, they're both like being like apologetic and also being like, what was wrong with him? You know, he's acting out. And I was like, well, he was clearly drunk and has a problem with drinking. Otherwise, he wouldn't have acted like that. Um, I can get very drunk and I never call anyone a bitch in their own car. It's certainly not somebody that I don't know. Um, and so the whole time they were just saying, well, like, he was drunk. He was drunk. He don't normally act like this. I'm like, I really don't care if you're drunk or not. Like, it's not an excuse. Um, and so you know, being drunk is not something that is an excuse for bad behavior. Um, if you rape someone when you're drunk, it's still rape. Like, there's not, there's not any gray area here. Um, if you get into a fight and you stab someone when you're drunk, it's still murder. Like, being drunk is not an excuse for poor behavior. Um, so anyways, we get to their house and we pick them up, or I drop them off, I mean, and, and everything's cool. The ride was like, I don't know, like, I think it paid out like $19, they gave me a $5 tip, so it was $24, and then I received a $20 cash tip um, from the guy who was in the uh, passenger seat. And I really, you know, it was $44 for like half an hour of just complete and utter bullshit, just ridiculous. I've never felt like I wanted to stop driving for Lyft until this incident. And, you know, looking back on it, I know that I handled it very well, but also I just feel like this is ridiculous that people don't know how to act. This is a grown man who threw a fit because he couldn't go to Taco Bell. Um, so I hope that he's ashamed of himself and, you know, part of me would like to, you know, just call his mother and tell her what a failure that she raised um, because this is ridiculous. But anyways, <laughs> the story continues, guys. It involves the police. Um, so this morning, I'm at my hotel and I'm having breakfast and someone walks into the lobby and they, um, I'm sitting there eating my food, you know, chilling, and they come to the front desk and they're like, we lost a phone, um, and the Find My iPhone app says that it's here. Okay, so at this point I'm like listening, because I'm nosy, um, and the 
front desk clerk was like, okay, well, I mean, I can't really very well open everyone's room and look for your phone because this is a hotel and there are privacy laws and you can't just barge into every room. So the guy who's there, I would like to clarify, these were the nice passengers who came to get the phone this morning. And I say nice, meaning that they weren't the ones cussing me out, but they still were not very polite. So the guy who's with this girl says, um, you know, we can look for it now or we can call the police, like basically threatening the um, hotel manager. So the hotel manager was pretty much like, yeah, you're going to have to call the police. We can't just go open everyone's room. Um, so a few minutes later, uh, I'm sitting in the lobby still having my morning coffee and the police show up. Um, and so, of course, I'm the only one in the lobby, so everyone starts, um, or the police ask me, like, oh, what are you doing here, um, you know, what are, where, where did you do, or was there a concert last night, and I was explaining to him, like, yes, I, um, went to the concert, and I drove after the concert, not really thinking anything about it, I, I had assumed, honestly, that they were, um, had had their phone stolen or something like that, and not until a few minutes later did I start thinking, um, there could be some kind of connection, but to be honest, I didn't recognize the passengers the next day because they looked totally different. Like, I'm sorry, but when you don't have on your full hair and makeup, you do not look like the same person if you are caking that stuff on. Um, and it was dark, and I was trying to focus on driving, so I did not put two and two together. So the um, cops and the hotel manager and the people are all standing outside when I get done eating breakfast. So I go back up to my room and a few minutes later there's like this knock on the door and it's a police officer. I just knew it was going to involve me. Like any any kind of situation like this somehow seems to always involve me. Um, so the police officer was like, do you drive for Lyft or Uber? And I was like, yeah, I'm a Lyft driver. I was like, do you think they left their phone in my car? And he said, yeah, do you mind if we go check? And I was like, obviously no, I don't care if we go check. Even though I could have said, you know, you need to have a warrant to search my vehicle but at that point I just wanted it to be over and I figured these dumbass people had left their phone in my car um, and so when I got down there I asked them did you like I asked them where they got dropped off last night and they told me and I was like oh yeah I remember going there and I literally opened the passenger door and the phone was sitting in the floorboard of my car so all that to say if someone is a bad passenger or they make you feel uncomfortable get them out of your car like there's not going to be any uphill from the first moment that the person is rude to you. And we do not make enough money to deal with this kind of abuse. Um, there's a lot of practices that Lyft and Uber do that are not driver friendly. And considering the fact that when I called Lyft to report this, they didn't even care. Um, I told a man on the phone that someone had verbally assaulted me and made me feel uncomfortable in my own vehicle and was aggressive and rude and made me feel unsafe. And he was just like, we'll report it and make sure that you don't get matched with this person again. I was like, I don't think you understand the severity of the situation that almost had to involve the police. Because, you know, I was kind of debating if he continued acting like that to just call 911. To just pull over and call 911 and say I have an aggressive drunk in the back of my Lyft vehicle and I don't know what to do. So, in the future, um, I think that'll probably be my go-to strategy. Because people tend to shut up or go away when the police are involved. Um, and of course, whenever these people were calling the police this morning, they were acting like, oh, they're just these upstanding citizens and, you know, they lost their phone and their phone was wrongfully taken from them and now we have to involve the police. I'm like, you are the reason your phone is gone because you're so drunk that you had to worry about, um, your friend cussing out your Lyft driver instead of where your phone was. So this is just, oh my God, I'm glad that, I'm glad that this is over. I did not expect for it to come full circle this morning though. Can you imagine just waking up and the cops are at your hotel and prowling around looking for a phone because of you being a Lyft driver? Like, it's a bit unsettling. <laughs> but anyways, $44 and all of that as the cost of having to deal with them, I don't think it was worth it. And Lyft, if you are watching this video, if a driver calls you and they have had an incident and they're scared, it might be a good idea to be a little bit more empathetic um, and convince them that you're going to take care of the situation rather than just kind of saying, all right, we got this one, whatever. Like, they showed no concern at all. Um, quite frankly, I think that even though Lyft and Uber are you know, the big players in the rideshare market, if there were someone who was going to become, um, you know, more driver friendly rather than rider friendly, they might actually stand a fighting chance against these two because Lyft and Uber do not 
care about their drivers. Um, you are a cog in their giant machine and you are very disposable to them. They get plenty of new people. That's why we get referral bonuses for signing up other drivers. And, um, you know, it's only a matter of time until laws are changed just based on this Lyft Uber thing. And, um, you know, it's a big issue. I think that I'm going to make more videos about it because I think it's really, even though it's a very small part of my income, um, it's probably the most hands-on thing I do besides real estate and I love driving for Lyft like I and that sounds crazy after telling the story because I really do enjoy like most of the people that I meet that was probably one out of 150 rides that somebody acted like that but my concern is that what if the one time that someone acts like that you know it becomes a more dangerous situation um, and this is another reason why I think it's good for Lyft drivers to have protection in their car um, and make themselves feel safe so yeah that's the end of my great story involving um, a drunk man cussing me out for not taking him to Taco Bell and then the police showing up at my hotel room the next morning so keeping it real alright guys